Hey everyone, back with another simple practical river fly for you guys. And this one's an old favorite of mine. It is a hair's ear grub. Very simple, not many materials needed for this one. We've just got our orange glow bright thread I've tied in there. Now I'm just gonna tie in my copper wire. So add with that. Now this um, thread I'm tying in here, this is going to be the hotspot, like the butt of the fly. So I'm gonna come down the bend of the hook here a little bit. This is a grub hook, a TMCO2499. I do like this fly tied on a grub hook just for something different because so many of my other flies are tied on jig hooks or conventional straight shank hooks. So I've just chopped off my orange thread there. I'm gonna jump in and tie in some brown thread. like so. All right, and now I just need to dub in some hairs here. So I've got my hairs here, here. And when we're dubbing this in, we wanna make sure we have a nice taper. Uh, we wanna create a nice taper to the fly. So uh, we want it tapering towards the bead this way. So dub that in like so. You also wanna dub it pretty tight because if you get a nice tight dub, you can go back and adjust your taper. And also, it'll just mean over time, as this gets eaten, the fly will hold up. Um, it'll hold up better to fish. Is that? That's perfect. You don't need much of a hotspot, like a tiny bit of color or flash or anything in flies shows through in the water. So there we go. We'll keep coming forwards. Just want to keep making sure I'm managing the taper of this fly nicely. I mean, at the end of the day, how much does it make a difference? I don't know. My philosophy with flies is always when you tie them, just think of how that's going to actually affect the drift and how it'll change, you know, the drift of the fly. And the reality is not much, but it looks nice to us. We probably all tie flies because we're a little bit pedantic and, uh, and like this sort of stuff. Oop, drop the thread there. All right, a couple of wraps there. Now I'm just gonna leave a little bit of space there because I'm gonna rib this forwards. How's that? It's a nice amount of hotspot there. Rib my copper wire forwards here. Tie that down behind the bead. Now as I wiggle this, this should just break off for me. I do really nice tight little wiggles there. Perfect. Now I'm just gonna dub a little bit of hairs here behind the bead here. I'm gonna dub it in very loosely. Uh, sorry, like, like that. So the idea of this is when I tie it down, I don't have a super tight dub and hopefully that should give me some guard hairs to pop out nicely behind the bead. Again, does it matter? No, but it, <laughs> it looks nice and if it helps me sleep at night. Why not? And I can pull them back. Yeah, it just creates, it's funny, it just gives it legs, it makes it look a little bit cooler. And there we go. Now, I don't know why I did that half itch. I'm just gonna use some super glue here. Um, I'm not gonna whip finish because I'm using super glue, uh, which is gonna soak through the thread, the different uh, fibers of threads and bond them together really nicely. So when you do that, you don't actually need to whip finish. If I wasn't using some form of adhesive, um, I would whip finish because you don't have a stronger bond. So uh, you do want to whip finish in that scenario. But with uh, modern super glue, head cements, adhesives, you don't really need to worry about it. There he is. Um, really simple fly. Um, like I said, it's tied on TMCO 2499, a size 14 hook. This is a 2.8 mil tungsten bead. Always check the description below my tying videos because I'll give you more info on the fly. Also, I did, uh, this fly was included in my section of Australia's Best Trout Flies Revisited, which is a book published about five years ago or so. So if you want to find more information out about this, um, it's in there as well. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope that you tie flies like this or something like it and helps you catch some fish.